Hello everyone, welcome to the channel HMPNs. I am Abhishek sir and today we will study a very important topic of physics which comes in class 10 science that is light reflection and refraction. Note that it is the part 1 of the whole video. In part 1 we are only going to study all things about reflection. Topics to be covered in this video is introduction what is light, basic information about light, reflection, types of reflection we will see, reflection by plane mirror, spherical mirrors, we will also study a very important topic that is ray diagrams and then we will finally end up this with mirror formula and magnification. Moving on to the introduction part, what is light? Friends, uh, the variety of objects in the world around us are visible due to the light entering into our eyes after its reflection from the object. You see, from previous standards, we are studying about light and the very basic definition that we can make out of that knowledge is light is a form of energy that enables us to see. Now, as we are in standard 10, we'll have another technical definition that is, light is an electromagnetic radiation which produces sensation in our eyes. Now, various properties related to light is light, first of all, it is the fastest moving thing in the universe. The speed is about 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Imagine the fastest thing in the universe. Well, light always travels in straight lines. Uh, lights are non-mechanical waves. What do you mean by non-mechanical waves? They do not require any medium to travel. Now, whenever we represent light in form of diagram, we use two things that is ray and beam. Now, what is ray? Ray is a straight line drawn in the direction of propagation of light. And what is beam? Beam is nothing but a bundle of few parallel light rays. Now, friends, moving on to the next diagram. In this diagram, you can see a plane mirror and few lines and rays. Now, this diagram is representing a very important phenomena of light and that is reflection of light. What is reflection of light? It is the phenomena of bouncing back of light rays in the same medium on striking a smooth surface. Right now in this figure, what is the smooth surface? It is the plane mirror. Now, bouncing back is a very important uh, part of this definition. right? It is returning of light when it strikes any medium. Uh, that medium or that object must be plain, smooth or polished. That is why we have polished. We tend to polish the mirrors. Now, very important, uh, if we want to study these this figure we need to know about uh, the incident ray, the reflected ray, the normal. You see that uh, red line in the figure exactly in between which is perpendicular. It is called normal. Two angles we are going to study that is angle of incidence and angle of reflection. Now what is angle of incidence? In the figure you see there is an angle formed between the red line that is normal and the incident ray. That angle is called angle of incidence. On the other side you see again there is an angle between the red line that is normal and reflected ray. This angle is called angle of reflection. Now when light travels and also about reflection, when reflection occurs, it occurs on the basis of few basic laws of nature. Those laws are called laws of reflection. Again. Uh, as you have already studied these laws of reflection in uh, your lower standards, we will be revising it very quickly. The first law is angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. That certainly means that if the light ray is incidenting, suppose for example, if the light ray is incidenting at 50 degree from the normal, it will be emerging or it will be reflected uh, at 50 degree only. That means the angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. Moving on to the second law, 
uh, it is very important when we are drawing the figure the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal these three things the incident ray reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane now few extra points that i would like to uh, tell you uh, which might not be included in our textbook is that uh, we'll study about image what exactly is image what are the types of image now friends uh, if light rays coming from a point after reflection actually meet or if they appear to meet at another point then that another that second point is called the image of first point there are two types of image which can be formed first is real image second is virtual image basically they are bit different real image can be obtained on screen virtual image cannot be obtained on screen likewise we have many uh, difference in this type of image which we already have studied in lower standards that is why i am not going further into it uh, friends there are two type of reflection the first is regular reflection another is irregular reflection the both these reflections uh, they depend on the surface on which they strike likewise if you see in the figure uh, the first is very polished smooth surface uh, so the parallel rays after striking they go back parallel in parallel way so that is regular reflection in irregular reflection you see uh, the surface the surface is not smooth it is rough surface so even if they are parallel the incident ray are parallel they are scattered and they are all going into different directions now uh, moving on to the reflection by a plane mirror plane mirror is the simplest type of mirror that is we are using if the reflecting or the polished surface is plane then that mirror formed is called plane mirror so in this diagram we are seeing how is the image formed in the plane mirror let us quickly go uh, to the image properties as you can see uh, the image formed is virtual and erect image cannot be obtained on screen it is seen inside the mirror it is erect the size of the image is equal to the size of object also the distance of image is equal to the distance of object that means image distance is always equal to object distance and next part is the last property is lateral inversion now quickly telling uh, or revising about lateral inversion is when you are standing in front of plane mirror and uh, when you raise your left hand the image appears to raise the right hand so there is a change in direction so this type of image for obtained uh, by the plane mirror is called laterally inverted image and this phenomena is called lateral inversion now uh, another type of mirrors they are called spherical mirrors these are formed by cutting the circular cross section of spherical shell notice the word spherical shell uh, so cutting the circular cross section of spherical shell whose inner or outer curved surface are reflecting we form spherical mirrors now uh, based on the figure if you can see the dotted lines indicate the hollow sphere if the from the sphere we cut a part which in which inner surface is reflecting so that becomes concave mirror and if the outer uh, surface is reflecting that is called convex that means we have two types of spherical mirrors one is concave and another is convex now let us understand few important definitions based on the spherical mirrors the first two are center of curvature and radius of curvature these are related with the spherical shell from which the mirrors are uh, cut the center of curvature is the center of that sphere of which the reflective surface forms a part radius of curvature is the radius of that sphere from which the reflective surface of the spherical mirrors are formed talking about pole pole is the center of reflecting surface of a spherical mirror 
principal axis now axis you have already heard about axis when you have studied uh, the earth rotates on its axis what is axis axis is an imaginary line which is passing through the center same way here we have principal axis that is an imaginary line passing through pole and center of curvature of the mirror center of curvature of the mirror is denoted by capital c radius is denoted by capital r pole is denoted by capital p principal axis is a line so we don't have to denote anything moving on to the next part that is principal focus the point on the principal axis where the rays are actually meeting after getting reflected so if they are actually meeting it is concave mirror so that meeting point is called principal focus while in case of convex mirror they are not actually meeting they will only appear to meet so again that point will become principal focus principal focus will be denoted by capital f in some textbooks we see small f as well next it is focal length it is the distance between pole and principal focus and lastly we have aperture aperture is the diameter of the reflecting surface moving on uh, to the ray diagrams but before we study ray diagrams we have to understand few basic rules right and for these rules we will take one or two light rays and these two light rays at least two light rays are enough for showing where where the image is formed and how it is right so we will study four rules out of which the first one is uh, the rays coming parallel to principal axis will pass through the focus after reflection or it appears to come from focus after reflection why there are two options because there are two kind of mirrors so we are including both the mirrors in a single rule moving on to the next rule that is the light rays coming through center of curvature or towards the center of curvature will reflect on the same path they will come on the same path go back to the same path next rule says the rays coming through the focus or coming towards focus after reflection it becomes parallel it goes parallel to the principal axis the next rule is and the last one the rays which are coming obliquely to principal axis towards pole is reflected obliquely and what do you mean by obliquely at an angle right so if they are coming at an angle they will go at the same angle after reflection that is nothing but the first law of reflection right so these four basic rule will be necessary when we will study the ray diagrams why we are studying ray diagrams ray diagrams will give you the idea of image formation by these spherical mirrors so moving on to the next topic that is ray diagrams for concave mirror we have totally six ray diagrams then we will study ray diagrams of convex mirror and here we have two diagrams uh, in ray diagrams we will have to focus on four different things that is position of object where the object is kept position of image the nature and size of image uh, as it is a drawing portion we will have to study the figure carefully and then we will have to write the position nature and size so quickly let us go uh, if the first one if the object is at infinity the light rays will come and they will meet at focus so we can say that image is formed at focus the nature is real and inverted and size as you can see from the figure image is not clearly seen so size of image is highly diminished second one if the object is beyond c the light rays are coming after reflection they are meeting in between c and f so we can say that image is formed between c and f as light rays are actually meeting it is real and inverted and size is diminished the next one is position of the object is exactly at c so light rays are coming and meeting exactly just below the object at c real and inverted is the nature and size from the figure we can guess that size is same as that of object moving on to the next part if the object is kept between c and f after getting reflected the light rays are joining or meeting beyond c they are real and inverted and the size if compared now the image is magnified than the object 
moving on to the next one <clears throat> if the object is kept between f and p so what will happen you see the light rays are coming but they are not meeting actually so we have to elongate it on the back side so that is why position of image is behind the mirror the nature is virtual and erect and the size you can see is magnified the next and the last one for concave mirror is if we keep the object at f the light rays which are going parallel will reflect parallel and you see in the figure we cannot see whether they are meeting or not so we'll assume that uh, they might meet at any point in infinity so they will meet so real and inverted but if they are meeting at infinity it will be highly magnified so that's all for concave mirror now we are going for the next topic that is ray diagram for convex mirror we will study only two ray diagrams first the object is at infinity so light rays will come they will not meet actually they will diverge away but we have to elongate it and we can say that it is behind the mirror and it is at focus as we are elongating back side so nature becomes virtual and erect and size is highly diminished the last figure is position of object between infinity and pole of the convex mirror so position of the image will be behind the mirror between p and f nature will be virtual and erect and size will be smaller than the object right so we have finished the ray diagrams you will have to uh, draw it and you will have to study it very carefully moving on to the next topic that is uses of concave mirrors as you can see from the figures uh, concave mirrors are used as shaving mirrors makeup mirrors dentist also use that dentist mirrors <clears throat> then we will have uh, torches and headlights of car and lastly concave mirrors are also used in solar furnaces next use of convex mirror they are used as rear view mirrors and traffic mirrors rear view mirrors has a very uh, advantage that it enables the drivers to see the traffic behind uh, so that is how uh, the driving becomes very safe uh, it gives erect but little bit diminished image so that we can have a wide field of view backside to avoid the accidents moving on to the next topic that is sign convention friends while dealing with the reflection of light by spherical mirrors we shall follow a set of sign convention which are known as cartesian sign convention for that we have to assume that the origin is at exactly at the pole so any measurement above the pole perpendicularly above is positive perpendicularly below is negative if you are moving to the right side of the pole the values are positive and then left is negative so that we have to follow when we are solving numerical now in mirror formula and magnification that is our last topic what is mirror formula it is the formula which gives relation between three different things the three things are object distance u image distance v and focal length f of any mirror this relation this formula is known as mirror formula now lastly what is magnification magnification is the relative extent to which the image of an object is magnified with respect to the objective object size uh, it can be expressed in two ways the first is it is the ratio of image height to object height also it may be the ratio of image distance to object distance magnification is shown by small m so the formula becomes small m equals to h dash upon h equals to v by u notice that negative sign is according to the cartesian sign convention so that's all for reflection topic we have studied all important topic related to reflection so you have to stay updated yourself for the next video so kindly like share and subscribe to support us